Let the record show that the defendant and his counsel are present and that the jury is seated. Mr. Thomas, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ethan Thomas. I'm the assistant district attorney, and I represent the people. In the case before you, the evidence will show that the victim had a serious medical condition that demanded medical treatment. We will prove that the victim's condition rendered her physically and psychologically incapable of caring for herself. Her care was then wholly entrusted to that man, the defendant, Father Richard Moore. She became his responsibility, and he betrayed that responsibility by persuading her to abandon her medical treatment in favor of religious treatment. A ritual exorcism performed by the defendant allegedly to cure the victim by ridding her of demonic forces. We will demonstrate that this course of action directly resulted in the victim's death. I said a moment ago that I represent the people. We all know what that means, but it's a little abstract, isn't it? Ms. Bruner, the attorney for the defense, is seated right next to the man she represents. And I stand here to represent the people. That's not really why I stand here today. I'm here on behalf of someone who can't sit at a table and look at you every day and gain your sympathy. Someone who can't take the stand to testify and tell you what happened in her own words. A young girl that could have been your daughter, could have been mine. A girl who trusted Father Richard Moore with her life. This is what she looked like. Before the defendant began his religious treatment. This is a photograph taken of her on the day that she died. I stand here for Emily Rose, who died horribly at age 19. You won't be able to see Emily sitting here day after day during this trial, but I hope you'll remember her as she was when she was alive and full of hopes and dreams and as she was when Father Richard Moore was finished with her and left her to die. Thank you. Is the defense prepared to make its opening statement? Your Honor, I would like to reserve my opening statement until the presentation of the defense's case. As is your privilege. Prosecution may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. The people call Dr. Edith Vogel. I've known Emily her entire life. I took care of all of the Rose girls. Can you describe Emily as you knew her growing up? She was a bit sickly in her early years. She stayed inside a lot, reading, learning music. How did she feel about going away to school? Objection, speculation, the witness is not a psychiatrist. I'll rephrase. Did you talk to Emily about going off to college? Yes, she told me she was excited but nervous that she would be away from her family in the big city. This was an overwhelming change for her. Did you stay in touch after she went away? Yes, she wrote me a letter saying that she'd been to a dance and she'd met a boy named Jason. She didn't want her mother to know this because her mother did not approve of dancing and had warned her about the boys at school. And did Emily communicate with you again last fall after you received the letter? Actually, it was her mother. She telephoned me, waking me out of a deep sleep at four in the morning. She asked me to call Emily at a payphone on the university campus. When Emily answered, she was quite hysterical. At first, she just sobbed uncontrollably. But eventually, she calmed down enough to tell me what had happened. 
She said that she was alone that weekend. Her roommate had gone home. She had awakened and thought she smelled something burning. There was no alarm, but she got up, afraid there was a fire. 